first generation uh, American here on my father's side. I'm originally from Guatemala and uh, my family and I moved here when I was 11 years old to Florida and then um, slowly we made our way to Texas, to East Texas. And so I finished middle school and high school there. Double major in fashion design and international studies. I feel that me growing up poor, me growing up a gang member, you know, uh, not having the education that I, I feel I need, uh, confused, lost. Uh, at that time, I didn't know that it was just steps towards where I was going to end up now. I went from a material handler to a lead one, to a lead two, to supervisor, and now I'm a senior supervisor. We won an award, diversity award for Boeing, from Boeing uh, Corporation. You know, um, we got uh, our contract awarded to us simply on the quality of our board because of the hard work we put into it. At the Lighthouse, I've been here for um, almost three years. My goal, wanting to um, create and develop what would be sustainable manufacturing. So now I'm kind of switching over from design to um, how is it made and kind of all those processes that go into it. Because um, I do see there's a lot of designers and there's a lot of things changing. So I'm like, yes, I have that creative side, but helping them and helping the world kind of work on that better um, to improve that seems more interesting to me now. So I'm looking at an MBA and the reason I was like, well, I need to learn how to run a factory. So that's why I started looking more at management. So I was able to, um, decided to, um, when they offered me this position to be a supervisor, to take it on. So it's more leadership is definitely different. I feel like I have a big team. I have like about 70 people that report to me or that I have to do their timesheets. Yeah, it was stressful at first, but, um, it's getting better and have a really good team, good team leads. Yeah, definitely something that uh, my parents really pushed for. I always felt like college was the next natural thing. I, I think when I decided to go into fashion design, it just kind of naturally was like, okay, well, not like, am I going to go to college? It's like, which college am I going to go to? Um, and thankfully, I was able to apply through, um, my high school counselor told me about some scholarship programs that are happening in my community, and I was able to apply and uh, receive uh, scholarship and once I was in college I was able to receive other academic scholarships definitely has been a huge way to move forward for us and um, especially I saw saw that a lot of my dad because he grew up in a single family home but he was one of the first to complete his degree my mother wasn't a very motivated person you know I'm not trying to talk down on her but she just wasn't you know um, it, it's it's a cycle and when, when your family is raised on government assistance and that's what you're taught, then the next generation pretty much picks it up. The neighborhood was rough. That's where, you know, every day in the morning you'd be walking to school and you'll see a gentleman or a female outside at a store drinking a beer at 7.30 in the morning, you know, just trying to cope with life. Seeing things like that every day became normal. I wanted to get girls. What are the girls like? Oh, they like gangsters. Okay, let me do that, you know, so I went that way and I started chasing things that they weren't really going to make me happy. It was just filling in the void of everything else that I was going through. For me, it began, it began a series of events that just made me lose focus of my education and it became trying to fit in.
I, I can't really say that I've been exposed to many uh, racist things here in San Antonio as far as being a Mexican, because we are the majority. Um, but as far as our communities, how we were raised, the, the lack of insurance, um, lack of resources, you know, um, I'm exposed to racism here, uh, and not here only, but other places of, within ourselves. Mexicans against Mexicans, like I've said, it's uh, a Mexican Americans versus Mexican nationals. You know, uh, we're in America, they can learn how to speak English. You know, those are the kind of comments that I hear. Oh, you know, uh, they think they're better than us, you know, kind of things. And it's not that, it's me growing up the way I did, I understand that um, English is very important. And I feel that maybe not only uh, having those, those English resources company-wide, but if we can kind of throw them out to the, to the community, it would help, right? Because these people are afraid to go and apply places because they're afraid that they're going to get ridiculed by the way they sound trying to speak English. You know, um, I, I, I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I'll make fun of some of my friends that are Mexican nationals and I'm trying to uh, just tease them, right? But it's not right. But I, like I said, I know that it, that it hurts their feelings and it shuts them down from being productive or tr at least trying because they're, they're, they're embarrassed. You don't want more until you have it. But once you have it, you don't want anything less. Yeah, so they may have never experienced anything more, so they're not going to necessarily push for it. So if they've never experienced it or if they've never seen anybody go for it, anybody or anybody achieve it, they might not feel like they can do it. Like uh, we saw my dad, he finished his degree, he was able to get his dream job eventually. So that helped me and my, 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 my siblings was like to know that if we wanted to achieve something, we could do it. So that's what I took from them. Also, some people would just have a lot of fear. Yeah, for some of them has been still a language barrier, which I know at some point um, they may have offered classes here or they may have had a connection with some of the colleges to have some classes going. So, and right now we have a course going for computer classes. And I had some ladies uh, that were originally interested in, and then drop out. And then I had some that, you know, kind of, the information just kind of passed them by and then they see their other friends go and they're like, they're interested. Um, so I definitely think taking those opportunities, it makes the, the biggest thing. A lot of the people here at the Lighthouse, you know, they didn't find out that they had diabetes till later on in life because they didn't have no insurance. They were wondering why, why is my body feeling this way or why is my vision feeling this way? And they had no idea until like myself, I came to the Lighthouse, this is the first company I had insurance at. Besides, my mom, when she was younger, had Medicaid, but it's like I explained to you, she wasn't real big on health, so she didn't, we didn't go to our regular checkups for a dental, you know, we didn't have our annual checkups, you know, things like that we didn't do, right? Those things weren't pushed to us as being important, you know, as now we're older, we feel the effects, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, diabetes, you know, I've had my mother passed away from diabetes, my grandmother passed away from diabetes, my, my grandfather passed away from heart disease, my aunt that took over my, mo her, my mother's motherly responsibilities passed away from diabetes, my other aunt ha has diabetes. The resources aren't loud enough for us to hear, you know, they're, 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 they're lower down, you know, and I don't know if that's just a way of keeping us down or what, but in order for us to become more powerful, we have to go search for it. We have to take more time to look for these things. You know, that's why I said if this community was more outspoken and say, hey, we have uh, English classes for the community, five to eight, there's many people that would come. There's a lot of people that would come if it was computer classes because these people are afraid of technology. You know, a lot of these people don't want flip, they don't, they want to stay with their flip phone because they don't understand this smartphone. You know, those kind of trainings, uh, we, we got to empower the people. I've been lucky to meet some very, very genuine white people. Uh, like I said, my vice president, my old manager were the first two um, Caucasian to uh, invest into me, you know, give me training here at the Lighthouse and educate me to where now I can sit in, in an in a office like this or in a boardroom like this and, 
and sit with people in higher management, managers, you know, vice presidents, presidents, and I can understand the verbiage that they talk about because I was given those, those opportunities. It, it's very important to have someone to show you the way. You know, um, there's so many lost people out here nowadays that we need that. I wish I would have had someone in my early ages that would have kept me from doing some of the things that I did. You know, um, I, I would I would have finished school. I, I would have gone to college. I, I probably would have stayed in football and, and had a scholarship. You know, I didn't because I didn't really have anybody to sit there and tell me, hey, this is the way. That's why I try to pay it forward, and I'm part of a ministry. It's a ministry of the Third Cross, and what we do is we reach out to parolees and people on probation, and we try to steer them away from recommitting crime or um, trying to get their life together. You know, trying to show them that, that there's more to life than pleasing your homies. You know, it, it's family, God. You know, God first, always, you know, but there's way other, there, there's way different ways of going about your life than going about how you're used to it. I, from an early age, I was able to recognize that we had it probably better off than other people. Even when we moved to the U.S., it's something that I carried with me, that I know there's a lot of talented people, a lot of art artisans and people that may be smarter than me that aren't getting those opportunities that I have had. So I definitely feel that's what I, I had a, I thought of like creating my own company to connect to a factory back in Guatemala, to connect that to where, um, lift them up. So that really, I feel like the way to lift a country up or a society up is from the bottom up. The lowest ones are the new ones. If they are lifted up, then everybody else will go up as well. Um, so that was one of my ideas to kind of how to pay it forward. I've also started to, um, talking with some of the friends that I got the scholarships with, that maybe we need to keep that going. That's something that I have to pay back to, to the community around me in East Texas. And then I, I do feel like I have a lot to give to my Hispanic community here. Um, I don't know if it's as, as, as a leader or just as somebody who, who does know to kind of see where that initiative is and what is, to ask them what their goals are and then make a plan for them to achieve them because I know how to do that and I know it's possible. Not only do we go to men, but we go to juvenile centers and these juveniles, they're lost because they didn't have no father, they didn't have no mother, and, and some of them had both of them, but they're drug, they're drug addicts. To them, it's not even a priority to get their kids to school. We're raised to think in a box. Oh, y'all are good at cutting grass or y'all are good at building porches or y'all are good at this you know let's break that stereotype let's be engineers let's let's be aircraft mechanics let's be something you know different right because we do we that's what we are we, we're, we're we're pickers we will that's what we do we, we, we lay concrete you know we build how we brick that's that's not us you know that's that's the, the old us maybe right but why were we, why was that the old us because we weren't given chances you know we were always uh, hired to be laborers, that's what it was. They, they didn't want to give us credit for being smarter than we really were. We have so much to give, you know, and we don't understand that that's, that's what's keeping us there. It's because we feel like this is the only place we can go. Once we kick that open and we start seeing what else is out there, it, there's so much for us, you know, but that's the thing is if we have people out there to show us the way, it would be so much easier to get there.